to the city of blood, full of lies, full of plunder, never without victims. Nahum chapter 3, verse 1. Welcome to the latest installment of series 66, our opportunity to look at all 66 books a little bit at a time. It is our goal during this series to highlight each of the books of the Bible. We are now here in the prophet Nahum in the Old Testament. We are nearing the end of the Old Testament. And in this particular book, we have three chapters. It is a relatively short prophet, and it is talking about the destruction of the city of Nineveh. Now, you might recognize the city of Nineveh from a previous devotion or your reading or hearing of the book of Jonah. You remember in Jonah, also a very short book, Jonah is called to go to the city of Nineveh and ask them to repent. He does this, and remarkably in a very short sermon, in a short time, Nineveh does repent, but their repentance is short-lived. Nineveh is the capital city of a larger country known as Assyria. The Assyrians were particularly violent and cruel. They were ones who used their might to go and uh, create destruction throughout the area and throughout the region. They had overthrown the northern kingdom of Israel and had taken over their uh, land in a very cruel way. But during this particular book, Nahum speaks against the city of Nineveh and ultimately the nation of Assyria and says that the Arrogant and violent won't be allowed to rule forever. In fact, that the Assyrian violence has sown seeds for their own future destructions. Like I said, Assyria was particularly wicked, cruel, and harsh. The people of Israel were uh, taken aback by these nations, and they were in fact afraid. Essentially, Assyria was a bully. Now, you and I have dealt with bullies in our life for many different times. From when we were in school or maybe later on in our life of people who were using their power, their influence, their strength to take advantage of others. And Assyria certainly would do this. Jack Handy wrote a book called Fuzzy Memories. And he talks about an experience when he was in elementary school. And a bully in his school uh, every day took his lunch money. He got tired of this and wanted to fight back. And so he signed up for karate lessons hoping that the lessons would allow him to have the skills and the needed uh, ability to uh, fight the bully. So he went to a couple of classes and he was enjoying the time and feel, feeling like he was going to be prepared to uh, face the bully in school in just a matter of weeks. But after taking a couple of classes, his karate instructor, instructor asked him to pay him $5 per lesson. And so Jack decided to go back and give his money to the bully. My friends, the point of this story, the point of Nahum is that evil is around us, that people are cruel, and there are those who will seek to take advantage of us. And God is in the process of calling those people to account, calling those nations back to himself and allowing them to uh, live differently. And so we can either pay the bully or be prepared to defend ourselves, not with might and power and karate lessons, but by waiting patiently on the Lord. In chapter 1 of Nahum, we see a beautiful picture of what God, who God is and what God is going to do. In Nahum chapter 1, verse 15, the last verse in that chapter, it says, Look, there on the mountains, the feet of one who brings, new, brings good news who proclaims peace. This particular verse is an image of Christ. Christ coming to us, bringing peace, defeating our enemies, helping us to see the end of the cruelty, the punishment, and the wickedness that is coming upon us from outside of God. And so Nahum is a prophet against a particular uh, town and also against a people, but it is a greater story that God is working in the lives of his people. That he will no longer let wickedness and cruelty and things that are against us prevail, but that he will win and he will allow us to come back to him. I'm going to conclude this devotion by telling you a story from the Andy Griffith show. 
Now, Andy Griffith had many great lessons and many great tales, but in one particular episode, Opie, who was Andy's son, was dealing with a bully at school. And this particular bully would take his milk money every day. He had a lunch, but then he would bring uh, some money to pay for milk. And Opie was um, giving that money up because the bully was bigger, stronger, and older than he was. But Andy gave him some advice. He said, son, you're gonna have bullies in your life forever. And it is better to fight against them not with their own tactics and cruelty and, and to putting them down, but to fight for yourself and to keep what is yours. And so the next day at school, Opie indeed, indeed did stand up to the bully. Now he comes back with a black eye and he doesn't uh, win the fight from the most conventional uh, methods of that, but he won the battle and the bully stopped taking his milk money. The episode ends this way. He said, Pa, you know, a sandwich tastes a lot better with milk. My friends, Opie is right. Our sandwiches taste better with milk. What God intends for us, the fullness of God in our life, tastes better when we can embrace it and allow God to fight our battles and allow God to take care of the bullies in our life and for us to stand up for what is right, what is real, and what is true. I invite you, as always, to dig into the Bible, this book in particular, the book of Nahum, three chapters long, talking about the destruction of Nineveh and the nation of Assyria, but also talking about the destruction of the bullies in our life. I hope this helps you today. God bless you and have a great day.